Hey guys, I wanted to do a resin update to show you guys what I have been working on lately. And not much need for huge introductions. Let's go ahead and get down to it and we'll take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. First up we have a couple of these autumn leaves. I found this mold, believe it or not it's a chocolate mold, at Hobby Lobby. And these pieces are not glazed. These are straight how they are out of the mold. So pretty shiny and I like that they had some etching in the mold to give the veins of the leaves. So, just playing around with some glitter and then throwing in different splotches in there. I haven't domed the back of them or filed them down or anything. I don't even know what I'm going to do with them yet but just thought it'd be kind of cool to do. <clears throat> we have a steampunk heart. Now the glitter that I put in this was actually a peachy type of glitter and like an idiot I poured black on the back of it. And Again this piece isn't domed or even sanded and finished but poured black on it and black changed the color of the glitter. So I guess it should go without saying whenever you have a lighter colored glitter, make sure you're pouring a lighter colored background so your colors don't get affected. And since the holidays were just here, I made this little magnet. It's a Wilton uh, candy chocolate mold for the starburst and then the wreath was just a button I found at Hobby Lobby. Um, if you can see with the, the sheen here, I had tried, I made several of these so I could go and do a, a testing round with different kinds of glazes. This was done with triple thick. <clears throat> Not my favorite glaze, but gets the job done in a pinch. And again, not domed or even finished. And forgive the cloth background, I was working on making a blanket for my son. I thought it'd be a cute little background for this resin update. We have a Chippendales, as in the G-rated Chippendales, <laughs> uh, pendant here. Let's see if I can get up in there so you can see the nail art confetti. <clears throat> I thought the orange hollowed hearts were cute with the grass tinsel glitter and the white tinsel. Domed the back of it over the bale. And I need to reglaze him on the front. It got smudged. You can see the texturing there during the glazing process. Some of you might have seen this in my full resin tutorial. Made a Tooth Fairy trinket box. And again, I need to reglaze. This is a cute mold. I picked it up molds by Mia on Etsy.com and I thought it was a good idea to add the little dollhouse craft hinges on the side otherwise it just kind of lays there on top and doesn't hold down for anything. Okay. And then another chocolate mold spoon shape that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and all of these confetti glitters. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. It was more of a, the camera's not picking it up very well, but browns and coppers and more of a coffee themed with the white opaque glitter in between there and a brownish background. My friend's doing her kitchen and coffee themed, so I made a couple of these to go in her range hood. And then Misty Pixel put out a great tutorial on doing galaxy backgrounds or galaxy pieces with glitter. So I went ahead and gave my hand a try at it. These were also glazed with triple thick. Here's why I hate triple thick so much. Outside of the streaking that you can get in a not very smooth surface. See right here where I'm still matted? The triple thick peels up real quick. 
So I'm gonna peel the rest of this triple thick off and just go ahead and dome them with resin or maybe find a good acrylic spray. But I thought they were cute and then I just printed out some planets and sealed them in with HD duct tape. And put those in there. These will eventually get turned into magnets for my son's magnet board in his bedroom. <clears throat> and we'll get into the Xbox controllers. This one we've got white mixed in with the the white base. I went ahead and put some Swarovski crystals on there. Turn it in. Man down. Turn it into a necklace. <laughs> And another Xbox controller. These molds I picked up from catsperfect.com. She's super easy to work with. She's got some really great molds. These pieces are glazed, so they don't come out quite that shiny. I love the tinsel on this one. The pink glitter on this, the wineish glitter, I picked up at Michael's. The glitter name is called Janelle from Recollections. The camera's not going to do very good justice on showing it, but it's got a very awesome pink, purple, wine, like ombre look to it. It's really cool. And then a steampunk. Get up a little bit closer. There you go. I love this one. Love how it came out. I've already got my hole drilled for a keychain finding. And black in the back. And then went ahead. I saw a picture of this. I thought it was cool, so went ahead and got some resin and an empty ring bezel and threw in the cogs and I put a couple of the nine millimeter Aurora Borealis Swarovski crystals in there. I didn't glue them on top. I just went ahead and sank them into the resin. It kind of gets rid of the faceting a little bit, but that's the effect I wanted. And a Hello Kitty bangle bracelet. This one was just pulled from the mold two days ago. I haven't finished it. I haven't uh, glazed it or anything like that. I haven't sanded it. Um, the camera's not going to pick it up very well. I tried to go with a nice purpley type look to it and then a splotchy purple, like a hazy effect on the back. Uh, I cast this with Clear Cast 7000. I'll be doing a video on that soon. See how bendy? Um, I don't know if it's because I put too much of the Cast and Craft resin pigment in there. I didn't think I put that much in, but... I'm noticing a lot of my casting craft, or uh, casting craft, my clear cast 7,000 pieces are coming out bendy, or they're coming out rock hard, but the top layer is sticky, almost as if I was using a polyester resin. So I need to school myself on that a little bit more, and then do the review video. And then I have these, somebody, or somebody, some of y'all may have seen them from the Mass Effect Watch Me Resin video. This one was just a baby phoenix. I was a fan of the super chunky purple glitters. And of course the nail art glitters. But he was just too freaking adorable. And I need to redome him. You can see right here my son decided to pick him up and chuck him across the room. And the Mass Effect pieces. And the video, I had domed it with resin. You can see the texturing on it. I had domed it with resin, the ClearCast 7000, but it remained tacky. So I finished it with a resin spray, and it gave that texture almost as if I had used an acrylic spray. Not too big a deal in my opinion, but if you guys are looking for a perfectly smooth 
that cast and craft resin spray doesn't it doesn't work well for me anyway it may work well for you guys but and this tile I consider a fail I was not happy with the way the, the glitter came out I had it envisioned much better in my brain but you can see where some of the black had dispersed up here and you can't see the the silver that I had put in very well the silver fine glitter I didn't get all the way up to the edges here and the the iconic Mass Effect ribbon, cross ribbon here, actually should have been on this side. So I didn't do the mirror image method when I was pouring my glitter in. And I think the stars and the, the super chunky hollow glitters may have been a little bit much for having such a, a badass shepherd with shepherd fist bump. And then we have Space Hamster from Mass Effect. Again, the resin spray. And you can see the, the scorch, you're not scorching, but the texture right there. Again, my son picked him up and chucked him across the room. So I need to refinish that. I was happy with this. Everybody loves Space Hamster. If you're a fan of the Mass Effect video game series, you'll understand. I like the purple on it. <coughs> And then again, with the ClearCast 7000, again, you'll see I made a couple of these. These are going to be like pedestal bases to glue figurines on. This I made with the the Disco, or I'm sorry, it's called Bling, Bling Glitter. It's a Recollections brand from Michaels. It has a very linear, hollow look to it. These are going to be as pedestals for gluing figurines on or... Uh, you know, maybe some polymer clay figures that I make. We'll see. It's excess resin I didn't want to waste. But the cat or the ClearCast 7000, just as a tester, it's it's clear. It's nice and see-through. You can see it. But if I can get right up in here, you guys can see all those micro bubbles, micro air bubbles. And that was with a pretty slow stirring mixing, and after letting it sit and degas. Now, I will say this is one of the more bubbled pieces that I have casted with the ClearCast 7000. A lot of the other pieces have come out a lot more clear. But, you know, rave reviews on the ClearCast 7000 decided to give it a try. It's It's got a very low viscosity. I love that. It does help with degassing. But with the, the bubbles, the micro bubbles, and with it coming out kind of tacky, not so sure about it. Okay, and into the last pieces, again, since it was the holidays, I used my sphere mold that I ordered from Zuji Bean, or Zuji Bee, Amanda Mons on Etsy. She's also got a great YouTube channel. I've not really figured out a way to glaze spheres yet without a whole bunch of dripping. I'd love to be able to do it with resin so I get that really great uh, shine and, and clarity to it, but resin will drip and you know, you'll get that spot at the bottom and without having to babysit it and constantly wipe the drips off. So if anybody knows a really great way to glaze or finish some sphere resin pieces, I would love to know your tips and secrets. And then I use some two-part epoxy glue to glue on the jewelry wire for the top. Decided not to go ahead and, and sand the top from the mold. So we just got a, a snowman with a bunch of stars and some snowflakes. I consider this a win for a casting but also a fail at the same time for the sense that my my mold does have flaws in it so it picks up all the flaws and there's real no great way for me to glaze this. But I love it nonetheless. And then some final pieces, again since holidays, I went ahead and made some ornaments for the Christmas tree. You guys would probably remember this one from my full resin tutorial with my vintage snowman and the snowflake cake sprinkles. I went ahead and added that on the back since I domed it in clear. I wanted the Christmas tree lights to really catch a whole bunch of sparkle. These were also cast with the ClearCast 7000. Now these pieces rock hard, no stickiness, no tackiness. So again, I'm going to have to go back and play with it and 
and see if it's, well, obviously it's going to have to be user error since I've got great casts on one batch and not so phenomenal results on another. <clears throat> and then there's this ornament. These were just plain old paper stickers that I picked up some years ago making my son's um, first year scrapbook and I just sealed those in HD packing tape and the worded tiles I picked up from Michael's. They're double sided. They have all kinds of words in there. Pretty cool. And again some of the snowflake cake sprinkles and red and green linear hollow tinsel glitter with some of the super chunky uh, hollow silver glitters and some of the green shredded cellophane and then topped it all off with the bling silver hollow extra fine glitter. I really love this piece. I think this is my favorite one out of the entire lot. And then we have this ornament. Just some stickers I picked up at Michael's. Some cake sprinkles. The green shredded cellophane with the uh, similar shade of green extra fine glitter. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm, I've got my camera set up differently this time because I was hoping to get some better lighting for you guys. So I'm hoping that this isn't too dark. And then a glittery background. Again, I wanted my tree to catch as much sparkle as possible. I am truly, truly a glitter and sparkle whore. Oops, I'm going to fingerprint on the back of that. So story on this one, I had made some faux chalkboard ornaments, loved the stickers, they're a pack of 50 for like two bucks at Michael's, holidays are over so, you know, maybe you can find them on clearance, uh, and with the candied cake sprinkles of the holly. The light bulbs are epoxy button accessories, and they were colored but they came out dark I wanted a black background to go with the the chalkboard theme and I didn't think about coloring the, the light bulbs because they are a, a translucent epoxy button accessory. I didn't think about coloring the light bulbs so that way the colors would stay true so they kind of came out dark. So I thought okay instead of casting black background we'll do it with a white background. So while the colors stayed true, unfortunately what happened, it's like this uh, yellow right here, prime example, the glitter that I had poured on the back stayed on the back of the bulb and then when I poured the white resin for the doming layer, or the background layer, it made that effect. So I consider both of these pieces fails. I mean they're still pretty and I don't have the heart to throw them away you know, and I'll keep them on my tree. but. Lesson learned, next time I do something like that, I'm just going to take yellow paint for a yellow bulb. You know, blue paint for blue bulb, red for red, paint the backs of them. That way we don't have to worry about that issue again. And then my very last piece for now, a final Christmas ornament. Love, love, love this piece. Same sticker pack as the, the Elf and the Merry Christmas from Michaels. Some cake sprinkles, super chunky silver hollow glitters, and then just some pale blue extra fine glitter, some white extra fine glitter, and then of course glitter on the back. Again, cast with clear cast 7000. Hard as a rock, no tackiness. So there you go, that's what I've been up to for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the pieces. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. Any requests, the same, uh, put in the comments or send me an email. And see you guys soon.